Hello and welcome to Switzer Investing Insights brought to you by NAB Trade. And today we want to talk about the five actions, important actions you should take before the end of the financial year, June 30. Paul, let's kick off with the one that really is important, I think, is review your investment strategy. Look, it's actually a requirement for self-managed super funds to review their investment strategy on a periodic basis, which mm. I think is at least a year. But I think it's applicable to all investors, Peter. We all have an, should have an investment strategy. Mm. We all need a reason to recheck just to make sure that's still right. Sometimes our circumstances can change or yep. we can be managing money for someone else or in the case of a self-managed super fund, you might take a member in or a member might leave. So a really important time, 30th of June, is just to sort of add a line in the sand Let's have a look at what we're trying to do. Yeah, and I guess if you just left work and you might have been in a balanced fund, you might want to go very conservative now you're retired. You might a- absolutely, to- a really good reason to uh, double check to make sure it's right. Yeah, okay, number two, check and confirm your asset allocation. A lot of people don't think about this. Yeah, I think this is the hardest thing for people managing their own money is their asset allocation. All the fund managers, you know, professionals in this mm. business have very strict rules around asset allocation. So I think this is an important thing on the screen in front of you. Uh, you can see some sort of generic risk profiles all the way through from secure through to high growth. Mm. Now, the important thing here is the mix of between income and growth assets. So income assets are things like cash and term deposits. You just get income, no capital appreciation. A growth asset you hope will go up in value in time. And you can see that a secure uh, asset allocation is largely 100% income right through to high growth where it's 98% growth assets. And then you can see a breakdown between some of the different asset classes, cash and term deposits, bonds, property, Australian shares, and international shares. Now, these are just targets, uh, and they match these sort of six generic um, descriptions. Now, that doesn't mean that's quite right for you, but Mm. if you are, you know, think about where you are and your colleagues are, if you're sort of a fairly conservative type of investor, (laughs) you're not going to have 80% in growth assets, right? And this is what we're trying to illustrate here. Now, the reason why it requires a periodic review, Peter, of course, is that markets change, asset values change, Mm. things go up and down in value. And where you thought you were 12 months ago might have changed after 12 months. Mm. So it's just a a sort of a recap to say, look, this is what I want to be. This is the type of profile that suits me best. These are the assets I've got. How do they stack up against some of those I guess an example, mining stocks have really gone for a big run. You might have a bigger exposure to growth stocks than you really want. Yeah, that's a great example, Peter. And things do change as, as markets move and the year progresses. Okay, let's look at the third point as for stocks. Check your sector allocation. So this takes it down to the next level. Let's assume we want to have X percent of our portfolio in Australian equities. This just looks at the how we actually our portfolio matches compared to sort of the index. Now the index is not right or wrong, it's just a statement of what it is yeah. at a point in time. And it's broken down into 11 ASX uh, industry sectors, and you can see those on the left-hand side of the screen. Now the largest sector, uh, financials, makes up about 33.5% of the market. Mm. The material sector, which is number two, makes up just over 18%. So I think it's important actually to, to look at your portfolio and compare it to the index and work out whether the biases you're taking, that is you are overweight or underweight different sectors, is actually where you want to be. And the reason again is that things change during the year, securities move, markets move, and of course you get out of step a bit in terms of uh, where you might have wanted to be and where you actually are towards the end of June. Also on the the right of the screen, you can see some targets perhaps for an income-based oriented portfolio and a growth portfolio, and they've got different biases. So it's not to say that one's right or wrong. It's not to say that it should be overweight or underweight a sector, but the important thing is just actually to work out where you are and then make sure that the bias you have in your portfolio is where you want it to be. Uh, the fourth action, which is very hard to do, is throw out those dog stocks that just haven't performed. Yeah, I think the, older, the hardest thing in an investment is to realise mm. you've made a mistake and get rid of it, cut it. <laughs> And I think the 30th of June is just getting that line in the sand. Let's yeah. have a look at what's happened to our portfolio. Are there some stocks we really shouldn't have and it's time just to clean it out? Mm. Now, there's an old adage in investment, Peter, you'll be familiar with. Your first loss is your best loss. Yeah. Basically, it means when you recognise something is wrong, you're better to cut it then and there yeah. rather than hang on and wait and hope. Because the reality is you can buy back again when you think it's really hit the bottom and it's on the way up. But... Waiting for it to turn around when it's that first stage of falling can be a very even, silly uh, policy. Even if you buy back at the same price, you still feel better. <laughs> because <laughs> it is just that psychological thing. I just think yeah. it's the hardest thing as, as an investor mm. is to recognise I was wrong. You know, sometimes you can recognise the wrong part, mm. but to take the action. 
Yeah. And I think 30th of June is just that time to, yeah, good point. to, to bring it all together. Number five is consider any c- capital gains tax implications. Yeah, let's have a quick rundown of how capital gains tax work because 30th of June, it is the end of the, the financial year, the end of the tax year. So let's just uh, have a look at how capital gains tax works. Of course, the most important thing about capital gains tax is you offset gains and losses. So mm-hmm. if you've made losses, don't forget about them. They can be used to offset a gain. You only effectively pay tax on your net gain, so that it's again the, the benefit of the offset, and it's tax at your marginal rates. Now, of course, there is a discount if you've held an asset for more than 12 months. For individuals, that's 50%. For a super fund, it's a third, and for a company, there's no discount. And that's a reason sometimes just think about when selling assets. You know, if something is coming up mm. to 12 months, you may just want to wait a few days uh, just to make sure that you can get a hold of access to discount. And of course, Finally, what that means is, is that your highest effective uh, tax rate uh, for an asset you've held for more than 12 months, for an individual, 23.5%, for a super fund and accumulation mode, it's only 10%. And lastly, uh, if, you've, if, you can't, if you've made a loss and you can't use the loss in this current tax year, mm. don't forget about it because you can carry forward a loss from one tax year to the next. And you can actually carry it forward indefinitely. So capital losses, don't forget about them. They can be used. You'll get a chance to offset again with that loss at some stage. Okay, so let's recap again. So number one, review your investment strategy. Number two, check and confirm your asset allocation. Number three, for stocks, check your sector allocation. Number four, throw out those dog stocks. And five, consider any CGT implication. I'm Peter Switzer. This is Switzer Investing Insights, brought to you by NAB Trade. Thanks for joining us. 